Well, first of all, milepost 31, it was like, what is this? When I heard about Bertha in the tunnel drilling machine, I thought it was going to be another case where I would maybe peek through a fence and see a little something and, and just sort of hope for the best. Then I discovered milepost 31. And uh, needless to say, I, I think I died and went to heaven. The people at Washdot were very interested in being creative and supporting the neighborhood in new ways. And so we cooked up the idea of having a center that would both meet the needs of promoting the tunnel project and at the same time could be a tourist information center about Pioneer Square itself and learn about the history of this neighborhood, the history of Seattle. And from that, Milepost 31 was born. Usually when we deal with historic resources, we do things like uh, we'll pr put information on a website, we'll provide photos, we'll do interpretive signs. We might also provide information to an existing museum. But here we, we actually had a museum put in place for this project specifically and in the Pioneer Square area, the area that it was specifically impacting within the city of Seattle. Our viewing platform was just a few blocks away, pretty much right on the outskirts of Pioneer Square. So from there, people could take pictures. They could also see pieces of the machine when it was originally launched in 2013. When we originally started, it was just a pit. And then eventually the machine went in. And then we had a, a South Portal operations building and a lot of other construction work going on. And people actually got to see the soil coming out of the launch pit site, so that was really cool. I think the speaker series stands out as something that also drew a lot of people to the neighborhood who wouldn't typically come here and certainly wouldn't have come here during the significant construction that we've been under for so long. I went to see a leader of the Native community speak, and even though I follow these issues around the city, uh, that was the one opportunity I had to hear someone who I didn't See, um, have opportunity to do otherwise. And then I had some time after the speaker to explore the community. And I mean, the art walk was amazing and hadn't been before. So it was a nice sort of synergy of, of new experiences for me. We were trying to inspire uh, the next generation of engineers. So we would do a bunch of different activities. We did asphalt cookies making a, a chocolate no-bake cookie. They learn how real asphalt is made. And then we also did some activities with the project itself. Bertha uses these different soil conditioners that are similar to household products like shaving cream foam or just soap. So we had the, the kids mix uh, those kind of conditioners in bins of sand with water. We also did jello earthquakes, creating marshmallow toothpick structures to withstand a jello earthquake. The Milepost 31 bike tour allowed you to actually see the project from the ground level, every portion of the project from the south end to the north end. The bike tour uh, tried as best as possible to stay the exact route of the tunnel so you could actually see exactly what the tunnel was going under. The tour really allowed folks a completely different perspective, an overview of history, so what was here before the viaduct, what's here now, and what will be uh, in the future on, in the place of the viaduct. I think that creating a visitor information center as a mitigation practice goes a long way for promoting a neighborhood through turbulent times of construction. From Federal Highway Administration's perspective, WashDOT exceeded expectations with the Milepost 31 uh, Museum. As a partnership, it's worked exceedingly well for us. I like to think that it's also worked really well for WashDOT they can hold this up as an example of a place where they interacted in true partnership with a neighborhood and it's worked out really well for both partners. <laughs> <laughs>